Dallas. At Dallas, they play back to backers in mid June. And we are underway in Minneapolis. And right away, Sylvia Fowles kicks it out to Dantas, who has become really a mainstay in that starting lineup. Yeah, Vicki Johnson not afraid to change up her starting lineup and likes the size of Collier against Sylvia Fowles. They've been scoring a lot of points there during this win streak. They're going to put pressure at the rim on this Dallas defense. And the outside shot nailed by Agum Bawale. You see Kayla Thornton defensively guarding Nafisa Collier. I think that's an intentional change to the lineup by Vicki Johnson because Collier can post you up and Thornton can guard a big. And she said she likes that shot, but not when she throws it up from about 15 feet away. She's, she says that she's been working with her and, and really trying to impress. WNBA standing Cheryl Reeve year after year, no matter what puzzle pieces she has, makes it work for Minnesota. And Dantas made that look easy. Right. Good job, takes the contact and gets the follow home. I am looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Vegas, back to Vegas. Vegas is always fun. Fouls working inside. She wants her team to make three passes before they shoot. She's trying to get her young team to be a little bit more disciplined. So you see him focused in on that, and it paid off to have a little bit of patience there. There's that little drought for Dallas. Not this nice little fake to buy herself some more room. Had started especially earlier in the year. Dantas giving them more size, more versatility. Now Clarendon kicks it over to McBride, just sets her feet and splashes the three. But Alicia Gray, Ty Harris, so Coach Johnson going to her bench to try to get some things going. Yeah, this is a little bit more of an offensive-minded group. Big shot there by Ty Harris. Got it inside to Fowles, and boy, Sobley told you during that interview they wanted to clamp down on Fowles, and they've done a good job of it here in the second quarter. They're going to force Sylvia Fowles to have to pass it out. Dude, I like the jersey in her. I like the jersey. <laughs> yeah, Coach Johnson played several years for the New York Liberty, and very familiar with that part of the country. And here is Rachel Bannum. The powers of Chandra and Renaya Davis signing, releasing, and re-signing players, and Bannum was one of those. To the bench, Dangerfield one, back in. And one thing that Dickie Johnson mentioned to us as well, as McBride hits the shot and will go to the free throw line. Kayla McBride now with 35 straight made field goals on the season, has the best free throw percentage in the league, and some of that quickness you were talking about. Now Bridget Carlton, who also will be playing in Tokyo as a member of the Canadian Olympic team. Head coach of the WNBA champion Minnesota Lynx, he said, I look forward to learning. You know, it's a lot of scouting. We're, they're working with a great staff there. Beautiful move by Kayla McBride off of the bounce. One of the great things about going, she, she can find some new things. Still, And that's that shows that she realizes that you can never stop learning and continue to grow. And you to get better at in her career is that moving without the ball in her hands. Beautiful cut there by Dante. She just does whatever you need her to do. A very important cog, the best perimeter defender on this team. Savali gets it out to Thornton, who hits from the outside. <laughs> Which saves us about 20 phone calls a week. <laughs> thank the yeah, Google thank goodness for you, right? <laughs> just ask Siri. Oh my goodness, from the outside. You're not going to co-sign on me? Okay, that's fine. Here. I'm running out in the first half, and just as the buzzer is about to go, the shot is nailed. And Allery getting the start, the second year pro out of Princeton. Collier, Charlie Collier started by Satu Sabli. She had six assists in the first half, and that's your starting power forward. And Sylvia Fowles finally gets another shot. She was scoreless for the last 14 and a half minutes. She got a deep feel on it. 
Spari six assists for Sabli already a career high, and now she goes inside to score. As we mentioned earlier, she can shoot right and left-handed, so it's hard for the defense to anticipate how she wants to finish. See how Allery is meeting Sylvia Fowles at the top of the key there, but really nice pass and good recognition that Nafisa Collier had a smaller defender. First point of the night was 0 for 3 from the floor in the first half. Averaging just under 18 points per game to lead this team and a nice friendly role for Mariah Jefferson. Different moves and what she can anticipate, and that was one of the biggest question marks was her health. She's had some major knee surgeries in. Sylvia Fowles is taking it to Dallas early in the third, giving up several inches to call it in the post. Yeah, officially giving up five inches. Off the inbounds, nicely done. Quite a play there by Harrison. In the last four games, Harrison has been lighting it up, 17 points per game. That was a good defensive play, and then McBride from outside. Had to take tough shots, and she's had to work, but she's up for the challenge. Two on one, Rachel Bantam spun and hit. Second bucket of the game, both coming in this quarter. So, yep, Friday night, and China and I will be calling that game for you. The Collier working on Gray, the best defender. That's such a good matchup, and Collier's starting to come alive. Here comes Collier. I mean, taking. Alicia Gray down to the post, taking her off of the drive, just being more aggressive and using that advantage. Oh boy, persistence. Minnesota jumped on top. Alicia Gray now six straight games in which she has scored in double figures. Carlton gets it over to Lasia Clarendon. Inside, nice assist. Inside a minute to go in the third. Sylvia creeping up on another double-double. As she called them, and it certainly worked out, but Dallas still is leading. And the question is, how does Dallas, as Kayla McBride gets that to go? Put back. Yes, that's that was the call, the offensive foul on Agum Bawale. Shot clock inside five seconds. Sobley passes out. And as the shot clock expires, it's Kayla Thornton. But we hadn't seen that from Satu Sobley in the second half. She got so many of those looks. And how about Lasia Clarendon? Defensively there on Minnesota to keep Agumba Wale out of the paint. Carlton finally hits one. And that's where Enrique Agumbawale is still growing as a player. You know, in those plays where they're walling up in the middle of the floor, she has got to find the extra defender. That time, there's no yep. wall. Just a layup. <laughs> Keeping in mind, Enrique Agumbawale leads the WNBA in scoring in the fourth quarter. They need her on the floor. But here goes Carlton. Who is known more for her three-point shooting, able to get a bucket in transition to get Minnesota a five-point cushion. Alicia Gray, just too quick, blew right by Carlton. Ty Harris in the game. Just laid it off nicely for Harrison. Maybe not as physical as what you see now with the Kayla Thornton. Um, and, you know, the Lynx have just made sure that they stayed involved on, on every possession, and they've been asking for the ball. Kayla McBride, again, another example, just that step around shot. She's had a heck of a game, and then the answer for Ty Harris. And her minutes have started to diminish in the last few games as Vicki Johnson was cutting into the depth of her roster, but... Led by McBride's 22, but now playing some defense. Agumbawale indeed back in the game. And on the follow, boy, Izzy Harrison. She's got 12 off the bench. Rolling in and out, but Sylvia fouls there to clean it up for the Lynx. Pray. Boy, Dallas just ice cold from three after a hot start and the crowd at the target center liking what they're seeing